So, you've been using a spoon since you've been around two. Have you been making cocktails since you were around two? Probably not. Let's learn how to use a bar spoon. Brought to you by AwesomeDrinks.com. Check out learn.awesomedrinks.com to learn more about cocktails. Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer, and this series is all about learning you up on cocktails. Kind of building you that route to th that journey into cocktail mixology, into becoming a competent home bartender. And if you wanted to get a job in bartending, this probably wouldn't hurt either. So let's just keep it relaxed and easy. First, we click that like button. You subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're watching this on learn.awesomedrinks.com, you just keep watching and watching and learning and clicking likes if there's likes available. In addition to the bar spoon, the secondary component that you're gonna see in tandem with this is a julep strainer. And as I said in our shaker video, the mixing glass we're gonna be using for this is the tempered glass 16 ounce pint that comes with the home bartender starter kit at awesomedrinks.com. It's usually used in tandem with the Boston Shaker, but if you haven't watched the Boston Shaker video, you can watch that now for those shaken drinks. But we're stirring today. The main goal to stirring a drink is to bring down the temperature of the liquid components. Cold liquid actually has less dilution. You want water in your drink, which is what makes stirring important. So use your room temperature alcohol with your ice to get it to the right dilution levels. So the anatomy of a bar spoon. This is the bar spoon. It's got two ends. Usually it's got a little red knob. If you bought our home bartender kit, this is the one you have. Sure, you can upgrade to the professional bar spoon, which is the one I use on the show Common Man Cocktails that you're watching here, usually. It also has a red knob. It's just prettier. This part, what I like to call the measure end, is the flat side that you usually use for fishing garnishes out of Luxardo maraschino cherries, um, deep uh, olives, if you're into that. I'm not a huge fan. This is actually the stirring side. Most experienced cocktail folks that work at high-end craft cocktail bars in New York and New Orleans and stuff, you'll see them shaking this way. And you're probably going, oh, well, what's wrong with that idiot? He doesn't know how to use a spoon? No, he's actually doing it the way that he was taught old school. That's actually the reason there's a red knob on here. It's so it doesn't scratch the crap out of your glass. Depending on the spoon, most of them will have some sort of twists. This is a cheaper spoon, so they don't look as fancy as one like this, but it serves the same purpose. It's all about grip, which we're gonna see in a second. So to get the proper dilution, we're gonna do our spirits first. Since we're practicing, we're gonna use water. You can imagine this being gin, vermouth, and orange bitters. We're making a Martinez today. So you've got, we got a really large Martinez. So if you watch our Boston Shaker episode, what you're gonna do is you're gonna chill this first. So if you're using a pint glass as your mixing glass or a traditional mixing glass as your mixing glass, Pack that sucker full of ice and leave it off to the side. When you're ready to make cocktails, socializing with your buddies, you're like, okay, let's want to make some drinks? Let's do it. That's when you dump that ice out and now you have a nice chilled vessel. That room temperature now is getting a little bit colder because you've had that nice chilled vessel. You're gonna add your ice. Dilution only starts when you've added the ice. And without dilution, you have no chill. So don't let anybody ever tell you you're diluting my drink down. That's the goal. So you fill your mixing glass halfway with ice, usually large cubes. Don't use crushed ice or anything like that because the surface area is so vast, it's gonna chill very quickly and way over dilute. Put your spoon into your glass. I'm gonna do it the proper way with the red tip, but you can use either side. And you'll notice that it fits very well this way. If I use the flat side, I've got to wedge it through the ice to make sure I can get it to fit correctly. And if I did, like that, I would press it up against the back of the wall of the glass. But it, it, it just gets stuck very easy. So I'm going to stick to the side I like best. You don't even know how to hold this thing yet, right? Take your two fingers, stick it between them, hold it with your thumb, and then you can rest it and work this way. Two fingers, thumb, in. Using the clock method, we're going to pull towards 6 o'clock and push towards midnight or noon but you're at a bar, so it's probably midnight. So you're gonna pull, push, pull, push. That's the entire process. But notice how I'm using all my arm and it's very awkward, right? Now, we're gonna get up, we're gonna pull, push, and we're gonna use our fingers to do the stirring, like so. So I'm constantly pushing against the wall of the glass as I go, but I'm doing all of that with just my fingers, keeping my thumb there to sustain the movement Pulling with my pointer finger and pushing back with my middle finger. And you can get really fast. You do that for about 30 seconds to get the proper dilution in your drink. Then we'll show you how to pour. But one other thing you want to consider, learn how to do it with your other hand too. You don't want to have too much movement and it's kind of awkward at first because you, you, the pull push thing with your non-dominant hand is kind of a pain. But if you get really good at this, you can do two at once. 
Or, better yet, you can shake while you're stirring at the same time. That's a lot of work, but you'll get more done that way. Imagine being able to make two drinks at once. Why is that good if you're a home mixologist? You're like, but I'm not getting tips. Because if you're watching the Patriots game or whatever your favorite football team is and you're spending all your time making drinks, you're never going to watch the game. So at least if you can build your drinks double time, you'll be able to get everybody their drinks and get back to the game faster. We'll use a low ball for this one. Take your julep strainer, add it to the top to hold back the ice. Now you can pour your drink. Or you want to get fancy one-handed. It's really not that fancy. Becoming efficient with both hands will make your life easier. Remember, it's the fingers. I'd say 90% fingers, 10% wrist, 0% arm. That's how you use a bar spoon. Of course, there's a variety of different bar spoons. They have some that you can poke into your garnishes. They have some that have no tip at all. In my opinion, the spoon you have is the best spoon you got. To start your journey into cocktail mixology, home cocktail bartending, whatever you want to call it, check out the Home Bartender Starter Kit at AwesomeDrinks.com where you can get all your bartender starter gear and all your professional gear. Or just click the link right below. There's videos on the sidebar. Continue your journey learning how to master cocktails and barware. The essential bar tools that you're going to need to make yourself look pretty wicked awesome. We're teaching you how to drink.